So I'll just do a quick intro and uh, set, set, set you up. Okay, amazing. Everybody, we're back live. Um, I have with me our keynote speaker, Mr. Nanda Nilakani. Uh, Mr. Nilakani is a co-founder and the current chairman of Infosys, which as of today is India's sixth largest company by market cap. Mr. Nilakani was also the founding chairman of the UIDAI, and he presided over the wildly successful launch of the Aadhaar program, which gave a unique foundational ID to 1 billion Indians in just five and a half years from launch. Some people might think that building unicorns is impressive, and Mr. Nilakani has done that, but try growing a government ID program up to a billion users in five years. Mr. Nilakani is also a published author, active philanthropist, and one of the most influential thought leaders in Indian business and technology. Much of the great public digital infrastructure that we have today has been built off of his vision, including the account aggregator system. It is a pleasure to have him with us. Mr. Nilakani, thank you for being here, and over to you. Uh, thank you, Aryaman, and it's really a great pleasure to be here at this uh, uh, Sahamati Account Aggregator Hackathon. Uh, and it's really wonderful that we have so many people who are interested in the concept of uh, Account Aggregator. Uh, account Aggregator is a new type of uh, public digital good that India has pioneered. And uh, this is in the spirit of uh, creating different digital platforms where the public rails and ecosystems and rules and protocols are done as a digital public good. But at the same time, these are made available uh, with the necessary APIs and other ways for innovative companies to use to build innovative solutions for our people. Uh, Aadhaar was the first example of that. Today, Aadhaar is uh, 1.25 billion people have an Aadhaar and it's the fundamental basis for uh, electronic KYC to open a bank account. It's uh, the basis for uh, ADA enabled payment system, which came in very handy uh, during the crisis with 400 million transactions on AEPS in the month of May and June. Uh, so ADA is one, one thing that was built over the last 10 years. The other important thing, which you're all now well aware, is the UPI platform that was built by NPCI, which is a nonprofit uh, payment company. And UPI today does about 1.3 billion transactions uh, in a month. And UPI has shown the value of creating a common payment rail, which at the same time allows different market players to innovate on top of that to create value. Now, the account aggregator uh, framework in some ways is the uh, finishes this trifecta, this trinity of uh, public digital goods. And it's based on the simple principle that your data belongs to you. And it, it may sound simple, but actually it's quite complex to implement because the nature of data and the nature of digitization that has happened in the world in the last 20 years, the rise of the internet and the smartphone, is that the data which is there, which uh, all these platforms, all this digitization is creating huge digital footprints on every individual, every business. But these these are not available to the individual to leverage. In, instead, they're used by governments and companies uh, to either monetize or to you know, keep social law and order. But we need to have a different way of uh, what Mahesh called of data democracy or inverting the data so that the data is available to each and every one of us uh, to take it forward. Now, this is a very, very profound idea that data should be empowering to people and not used by others to sell to them. And the account aggregator framework is part of the data empowerment and protection architecture that India has launched, which allows that to happen. And it's also important to realize that why do we need this? One is, of course, that we want people to be able to leverage their own data, which is very important because data is going to be increasingly more and more strategic. But it's also because in a country like India, people are going to be data rich before they're economically well off. In other words, a person in Bihar with a smartphone will have a similar digital footprint to some uh, person in Boston having a smartphone. But their per capita incomes will be very different. So the idea is that if you can cre create a way of people being able to leverage their own data, 
can they use their data to improve their lives can they improve their data to get better financial services to get a cheaper loan to get a very good insurance package to get a credit card you know all these things we want people to be able to use their own data to get that and today because of the nature of uh, knowledge asymmetry a lot of people who are out of the system are not eligible for many of these services and therefore our financial services tend to be for a very narrow set of people only some 20 million people have a credit card and and so on and the question is how do we create a way for a billion people the whole population uh, to participate in the economy how do we expand the ability for people to get access to opening a bank account to get a loan to buy a to get a credit a car to uh, get an insurance policy uh, to buy a pension and the key to that is if they are able to use their own data uh, to get those things and therefore if there's an efficient and high uh, you know cheap way of everyone being able to access their own data in a in a privacy uh, uh, and secure, uh, private and secure manner and if then they're able to use that data to get something that they want this has a profound implication uh, on the progress of the country so the account aggregator net uh, idea is a very profound idea and it will mean that every one of us will be able to use our data whether it's sitting in a bank or sitting in a uh, our business data sitting in the gstn or my tax information sitting in income tax department or wherever i'm able to get that data from these systems based on a on a on a well defined protocol in a very secure manner and then i can give it on the other side to a lender or a personal finance company or a wealth manager or a robo advisor uh, and get some services from them so this is something which uh, is very very strategic and i'm really happy that you're having this workshop today now what's important is that the focus of this uh, hackathon is really on financial services because financial services are the leaders uh, in applying the aa uh, principles as you will learn uh, uh, shortly and the central bank which is the reserve bank of india has played a huge role in putting together the scaffolding and infrastructure for account aggregator and we need to give them a big vote of uh, you know applause for what they have done uh, for india but the good news is that the account aggregator framework is uh, uh, approved at the level of the fsdc which is the association or the grouping of all the regulators and therefore while In, really at this point it's the reserve bank which is uh, uh, the sort of shepherding or uh, leading this uh, effort over time all the other regulators will hopefully also use the account aggregator for making mutual funds more accessible or making insurance policies cheaper and so on so i think this is something which will apply across the financial sectors which a very a very vast uh, uh, opportunity the second thing is that while we are talking about the financial sector the account aggregator concepts are sector agnostic and the financial sector will be the first sector in which we will see it but tomorrow the same thing can be applied to the health sector or the skill sector or the agri sector where a person can have all his health records so that he can get better health uh, treatment a person can have all his education and skills record so he can get a better livelihood and job or a farmer can have all his uh, you know data about his crop and his uh, soil so that he he gets a better uh, you know in input to be able to grow the right crops and make more money so the beauty of the account aggregator framework is that it's abstracted above a vertical the financial sector is the first vertical which uses it but over time it will be extended to uh, other sectors now this is very very uh, strategic there's no country in the world which has done anything like this uh, many countries have tried to create uh, open banking uh, approaches like the uk or psd2 like uh, europe and so on but they're all specific to a sector or a bank uh, banking vertical or whatever but this kind of much more expansive infrastructure Uh, which allows you to do uh, account aggregation and data empowerment across the board is a really unique thing which the world is watching very carefully and seeing how india will uh, pull this off 
it also is about uh, scale it's about population scale so ultimately a billion people will have access to uh, their own data and it will be available both in a self service mode for those who can use it on their phones but i'm sure it will also be available in an assisted service mode for somebody who doesn't have a device or somebody who's not that literate can have assisted service to be able to get their own data it's also about creating a very high volume low cost infrastructure because if the entire population is using its data in a consumable way then it's about really billions of transactions per day uh, that will be whizzing around in a very secure manner from information providers on one hand to information users on the other and now we are used to these kind of population scale transactional systems uh, as you know the other uh, other authentication system does over a billion authentications a month upi does uh, 1.3 billion authentications a month and the stated goal of uh, npci and the ceo has talked about it is they would like to go take upi to 1 billion transactions a day and therefore i think the same kind of high volume low cost transactional system which we have in aadhaar and upi will ultimately come uh, in, in the case of uh, account aggregator and this will have a huge impact because people will now be able to use the data to improve their lives people will be able to use the data to get better services for themselves and this is something which makes this uh, idea very very powerful now you may ask why is it that you need to have the account aggregator framework in the public space and you know why not let some company build it but it is important to realize that if you want to uh, make something available to a billion people if you want something that is equitable uh, you need to create public rails by the same time this does not mean that there is no role for uh, innovators and the private sector uh, the idea being that once we have these common rails then different innovators will use their creativeness their smarts their understanding of domains and build very neat and very compelling applications for different users a uh, bit uh, people who are uh, borrowers people who want to buy insurance people who want to manage their wealth uh, people who want to do asset allocation all these people uh, can be serviced so essentially this is the idea of this is how do we create a public digital good but also allow market players to use that to create innovations for different use cases and ultimately when you think about this this is very similar to what we see on the internet i mean the internet is a public good it was actually funded and built by the us government but today the internet sees companies like google facebook amazon apple and all using the internet and then uh, gps is another public good built by the us which is the basis for triangulating exactly where your location is and applications like uber combine the internet and maps and and uh, gps to help you to you know get a car, cab and go somewhere else or ola does that too so i think what we have seen is that when you create a high quality digital public good as a public uh, sort of asset and at the same time you open it up through apis for innovators to build on it be it the tcpip protocol or the gps uh, location uh, protocol then suddenly lots of innovation happens and lots of market innovations happen which you and i can't even dream of today because thousands of innovators are thinking about what those applications are and this is exactly what we expect to happen in the account aggregator space uh, we will have many many financial information providers the banks you saw perhaps gst and will come perhaps the income tax will come so there are many many data sources on this side and on the other side you will have many many users building applications and the consumer will be able to take data from any data source and give it to any user and so i think you are going to see a lot of innovation and therefore the purpose of this hackathon is really to bring out some of the innovation i know all of you are smart brilliant people who have ideas that uh, you know we have not thought about and i do hope that as part of this hackathon you'll come up with some brilliant ideas and do some things innovative with the account uh, aggregator framework so please realize that this is a, a very very strategic thing for india it's the first time in the world that the entire population can access its own data and in a secure manner in consumable manner from many different sources and give it to many use cases and we are actually setting the trend for the world 
So what you do today and tomorrow and in this hackathon is very important. And I do hope that we'll come out with some pretty amazing solutions. So thank you and all the best for this hackathon. Thank you very much, sir, for that stirring speech. I'm sure it really inspired our hackers. I know that I want to now, I can't wait to get started building things. So thank you very much for being here. Thank uh, you. Taking a short break, everybody, and when we come back, we will have a our first masterclass, a technical deep dive into the account aggregator architecture. Uh, please save all your questions. Siddharth will be able to answer them in the next session. Uh, thank you once again, Mr. Nilakani, and uh, else we'll see you shortly. Okay, bye bye.